Let's take a look at this problem taken from the India National Mathematical Olympia 2018, problem 4. It says, find all polynomials p of x with real coefficients such that p of x squared plus x plus 1 divides p of x cubed minus 1. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The only thing that looks special to me in this problem is the term inside the polynomial x squared plus x plus 1 itself divides x cubed minus 1. So intuitively, the polynomials that I believe would work would be the monomials, the polynomials with just one term. This is just my thought, so I write in red. Now, the special thing about mon monomials about x is that it should be of the form some constant times x to the n, which means the roots of such polynomials should be zero. Zero is the only root. So perhaps this tell me this tells me perhaps I should start by considering some roots of the polynomial p of x squared plus x plus 1. So I start with pick any root alpha of p and let x squared plus x plus 1 equals alpha. And before proceeding, I should clear out some special cases, which is that constants must work. Okay, it just works. Well, you, it's obvious, right? Then suppose the other way around, then we can move on. Now, if x squared plus x plus 1 equals alpha, then we have to do some algebra to find out what would x cubed minus 1 become in terms of alpha. We can do that by finding x minus 1 because x cubed minus 1 is simply this alpha times x minus 1. So I do this by committing a squares. Then in fact, to find x minus 1, left hand side could be rewritten as So x minus 1 would equal to this expression. Okay, slightly um, complicated, but it's still manageable. Now, given that we can write x cubed minus 1 would then equal to this, as said earlier, which equals alpha times this new expression. Now after having obtaining an expression that represents x cubed minus 1 in terms of alpha, then we bring in the division algorithm. We can let p of x cubed minus 1 equals q of x times p of x squared plus x plus 1. This is simply equivalent to the fact that p of x squared plus x plus 1 divides p of x cubed minus 1, what we have in the problem. Then we replace x squared plus x plus 1 by alpha. So p of alpha equals 0. And that means p of alpha times minus 3 plus or minus 4 alpha minus 3 over 2 would equal q of something, which I do not want to calculate anymore tedious and unrelated and this multiplied by p of alpha which is zero 
So we've generated two roots from the root alpha that we've randomly picked. Now after generating some roots, we call that our, our aim at the beginning is to, sh is to justify whether constants times x to the n, the monomials, are the only solution. Okay? Which means we want to prove that all roots are zero. Now notice that the polynomials are just real with real coefficients, so we do not guarantee all roots to be real numbers. So they could be complex, and so to make all everything well defined, I will just consider the modulus. So now I pick the root instead. with the maximal modulus. It's very hard to work in complex numbers, but we can simply put everything into views by just considering the modulus. That would be sufficient for us to justify that uh, or to determine whether all roots are just zero. Now, because this root has maximal modulus and this root also generates some other roots as well, I can compare them generate some new roots and these new roots should have the modulus at most the modulus of the beta the root that we've picked now we want to prove that beta should be zero so we have to assume the contrary so that we can work something out if this is non-zero so obviously we can divide both sides by beta and we do not have to worry about the sign because modulus must be not negative. So we have this. Just multiply, move the two to the other side. And notice that we're actually working on two roots plus the four beta minus three square root or minus that square root. Now I can say, to make use of the two roots, I will introduce the triangle inequality. Is that the sum of these two roots is less than or equal to the modulus of each root separately and both are at most 2 so this sum is less than or equal to 4 however the special thing is this thing is actually equal to 6 because these terms cancel out minus 3 minus 3 modulus is 6 but 6 is less than or equal to 4 which is absurd so, contradiction. Now, this contradiction arises because we have assumed that such beta has modulus being to be non-zero. So, the only thing that could happen is that this beta must be zero. So, even the root with the maximum modulus is zero, so that means all roots are zero. So that justifies our claim is that the only thing that would work are the monomials. Where C is a constant, okay, non-zero, I should actually add something at the top 
is that it's not just constant polynomials, it's non-zero constant polynomials work. And this n should be natural numbers, sorry, integers, which are not negative. And of course we check and it's obvious that the one at the bottom to be divisible by the one at the top. So yeah, we are done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.